Okay, hacksters, um, we got something pretty cool to look at today. Uh, I went to this workshop yesterday for the new ESP32 Pico D4, which is a successor to the ESP32 that you know and love. Um, it also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and uh, you can control it over USB. It, um, this guy is a little bit different. It has eight times the flash memory because it has a built-in chip, um, or, or thing of flash memory whatever you would call that. <laughs> That's four megabytes, And um, it also has a built-in crystal and it's in a seven by seven by one millimeter QFN package. Uh, so this is a little board that they've worked up. Um, it is called the ESP32 uh, Pico Core Board. It says that on the inside here. Uh, and there are a very few available online and I'll link you to those in a minute. Um, but there's some really cool stuff about this, including a bunch of different ways that you can program it. You can use the uh, Espressive's, uh, Espressive is the manufacturer of the chip, that's their logo. They have their own um, development framework, what do they call it? Uh, IoT development framework, uh, which works in C or C++. So you can use that with Arduino functions. You can also use the Arduino IDE with functions from the IDF. Uh, so either way you want to work with C or C++ on that. Uh, you can also work with Python, so it supports MicroPython, uh, PyCom, and Xerinth, uh, which are all these different options that you have for programming this board in Python. And then on the other hand, you also have JavaScript via Mongoose OS. Uh, in fact, Mongoose also works uh, to program it in Arduino. It's a browser-based uh, or CLI-based, command-line-based um, uh, development environment. So you can use either one of those. Uh, and Mongoose is, is supposed to make it really easy to program any kind of board with any kind of language that you want. Um, and then finally, you can also program it in Lua, uh, using Lua RTOS. So this red thing here, so this black th matte blackboard, I love matte blackboards, they're so classy. Um, <laughs> you've got the antenna over here, your um, USB connection over here. Uh, EN stands for enable. It's sort of like your reset switch, but you don't really need to use it. Uh, and boot is similar. It uh, chooses the boot mode. So you normally don't have to use either of these, according to the workshop. Um, it's just if something starts going wrong, you might mess around with those and see what happens. Uh, on this cool little dev board that they created for this workshop, it's a, supposedly a one-off, but I really hope that they keep using it because I think it's really useful. It's got five NeoPixels, WS2812s. It's really well documented on the board itself. It's got the I squared C uh, addresses for the built-in sensors. You've got this temperature and humidity sensor over here. You've got a light sensor down here. Then you've got uh, both the names of the LEDs and their GPIO uh, pin. They're on GPIO pin 23. Like all NeoPixels or WS2812s, they only need one data line to control the whole string of them. Uh, and over here we've got four user uh, programmable buttons. So those also include their names, but also their GPIO pins. Uh, it's really gorgeous, yeah. So they call this the SIP Core Launch Day Breakout Board. Uh, and the dude who designed it, whose name unfortunately I didn't catch, was actually at the workshop uh, and seems to have done just an excellent job. But he did say that they're probably not going to make many more of these. So if you happen to get your hands on one, uh, definitely grab it. You know, this thing is a pretty cool board. And so they've built a number of workshops around this. Let's go into the browser. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. Oh, let's look at the other one first. There we go. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. I got really fascinated by this uh, talk about security that they did, and we'll get to that in just a second. Okay, so uh, here is a blog post that our contributor Alistair wrote back in August about uh, the attributes of this cool little guy. And so he's going to be able to tell you a little bit more than I can, although uh, we do have some cool updates. But he goes more into the... Um, oh yeah, there's there's more wireless connectivity support than you get on the ESP8266 as well, which is pretty cool. It's got Bluetooth, you know, it's got SD card interfaces, UART, etc. Uh, oh yeah, and capacitive touch, which was pretty cool, and built-in 
uh, analog digital converters and digital uh, analog converters so you can work with analog sensors and stuff. Um, really cool stuff. All right, so, but what fascinated me about this was that they have a huge focus on security. Um, there were a couple of different ones. Oh yeah, there's a, a mode called Secure Boot that I think was already available in the ESP32, uh, which uh, makes it only run software that's been written and signed by you. Uh, it's also got TLS and SSL support for running on the internet. So they made a huge deal about all the security and how you should definitely use security. Uh, and to that end, there was, an, uh, there was also a talk from this group um, Intrinsic ID, talking about SRAM PUFF, which uh, PUFF, it's kind of a silly name. Uh, PUFF stands for Physical Unclonable Function. And what it is is they have, um, so when they manufacture transistors, there are minuscule differences in uh, the way that the silicon is manufactured. Uh, and they can't get rid of those differences. So they have an array of transistors. Uh, and based on which ones start up first, I think it works kind of like a flip-flop, actually. Uh, we were talking about flip-flops last week with the, or a couple days ago with the Monarch Butterfly uh, PCB. But yeah, I think it looks at, works a bit like a flip-flop in that it outputs a one or a zero based on which transistor is the first to start up based on these incredibly tiny differences in manufacturing the silicon. And with enough of these arrays uh, and processed in the right way, you get a 256-bit uh, sequence that is random because it's based on a physical process. Um, and I linked some cool articles about that below, actually, in the, uh, in the Monarch video. So it's a physical process, so it's unpredictable. Uh, and it's also, it's 256 bits, so it's practically, you know, there's almost no possible way that you could overlap these or accidentally uh, find the secure hardware signature of this device if you could like spoof it or whatever. No, that's basically impossible. And that's what they mean by physical unclonable function. Um, so they're getting this randomness and they use it to create a, a unique signature for each device. Uh, and that allows you to create a, a private and public key pair. So they generate a private key from the signature, the hardware physical signature, and then they generate a public key from that, um, and then you use those to sign your software and things and to communicate with it in a way that's extremely secure, more so than even like, you know how each device has like a MAC address usually? Um, this is like way, like several levels beyond that, but the same idea, like they have a, a, a physical address uh, built into the thing that cannot be uh, cloned or spoofed which is super cool. Um, there's more information on this. <laughs> I'm taking up like half the segment on this one security thing, but it's really fascinating. Uh, and if you're interested in IoT security, like this seems like a really good way to go because there's no way that someone can sniff this or whatever, you know, they can't, yeah. So uh, more information on this. Uh, actually in a couple minutes, I'm going to do a new video working through the workshops because I've got to swap out my webcam for the USB interface. Um, and in the meantime, you can find some more info on this board. Uh, there's an old article from CNX Soft. I'm not sure who these people are, um, but they have a really cool article from back in the from August, about a week after our uh, initial post, um, talking about how they got their hands on some of the boards, uh, and they do a really nice uh, comparison with some other boards. And also, it turns out that uh, two days ago, they started a giveaway where they have eight of these to give away. So if you want to get your hands on one, it, it's going to be pretty hard to get these for a while. Although, um, they're coming out at a really low price point, like sub $5, which is amazing. Um, that's the chip, though, not this board. Uh, and in the meantime, there's also a product on Tindy that's the ESP32 Pico motherboard for 16 bucks. Uh, but you know, once you uh, once these things get a little bit more ubiquitous, uh, I'm excited to see a lot of more people like creating their own breakouts on Oshpark or whatever. Um, and in the meantime, we're gonna have some fun with this one. So stay tuned. Uh, in a couple of minutes, again, we're gonna break this down. Um, where's my webcam gone? There we are. Uh, we're going to plug this in, 
do some programming. Actually, the, the workshop is in Mongoose OS, and it is in JavaScript mostly. Uh, we're going to be modifying an init.js file and using it to talk to Amazon Web Services, um, their AWS IoT interface, uh, over MQTT, which is a wireless communication uh, protocol. Cool. Have an awesome Friday if you don't stick around for the next video, but I highly recommend that you do. And plus, we've got some other cool stuff coming on. Uh, it is Fundum Friday, uh, and I happen to have an unopened hacker box here, which has been itching on my desk for the last like few days. So yeah, stick around. <laughs>